Welcome to the simple neuroscience of impulse control. I live somewhere with an electric stove. It has a coil that glows when it gets hot, which is a bit different than the gas stove that I grew up using. With a gas stove, there's a lot of flame that shows you, hey, that's hot. With an electric stove, it just doesn't give off the same warning signs. So then, why haven't I tried touching it? No one is born with impulse control, something you pick up on fairly quickly after spending time around a toddler. So then, how do we develop the restraint not to lick door handles? Well, our brains are programmed to pick up on things that are considered good or bad based on the reactions of people around us. It's fairly easy to learn not to touch a pan on a stove due to the painful physical repercussions, even if it is an electric stove. One of the hardest impulse control situations is when there is no immediate external repercussions to your actions. For instance, many students struggle to stay on task when they're online and often switch tabs between writing an essay and YouTube. In that scenario, the student is getting positive reinforcement from the YouTube video and no immediate punishment. This is why self-regulation is the hardest form of impulse control to learn. So let's chat a bit about the brain. Once again, we'll discuss dopamine being the reward neurotransmitter. In this case, it's important in the innervation of the prefrontal cortex from the ventral tegmental area. The ventral tegmental area is dopamine dominant and conveys the neurotransmitter made in the substantia nigra. The ventral tegmental neurons are designed to respond to reward and will send a burst of dopamine in response to unpredicted rewards. However, eventually they will start firing in response to the cues that predict rewards, not the rewards themselves. Think about teaching a dog to sit. Originally, you will give them a treat every time they sit, but after a while, the dog will respond to the sit command, even without the treat. This is why mentors need to encourage any progress in student self-regulation or progress on goal-directed behavior, because over time, they will associate the reward with the work that they're doing and eventually be more motivated to do the work and stay on track themselves. Thank you for watching.